Good afternoon from Dubai and welcome to ICCA Live, World Class Culinary Online. We are back with yet another interesting session in the series of US poultry and today's session is on terrines and coal applications. I will now hand over to our host, Shanas Raja, Director of Courses at the ICCA Dubai. Over to you, Shanas. Thank you, Karun. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to once again welcome all of you to this training session on cooking with U.S. chicken with Chef Adam Junk from our Faculty of Cookery here at the ICCA in Dubai. This time he has chosen to show you some cold applications that you could use as part of a cold table or even serve as an elegant appetizer at the start of a meal. For those of you who are here for the first time, a very quick intro on ICCA. The International Center for Culinary Arts in Dubai is an internationally renowned vocational education training center delivering professional and personal education in cookery, bakery, and purposely. During this session, Chef Adam's questions to you will pop up as polls for you. And if you have questions for him, do type them into the chat and I will take them up with him for you. Do and attend the entire session so we can send you a certificate of attendance at the end of the course. Over to you, Chef Adam. Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to another live edition uh, webinar here from the ICCA in Dubai. My name is Chef Adam. I've been a chef for the past 26 years. I'm currently an uh, instructor in the hot and cold kitchen. So today's theme, uh, today uh, I have an assistant helping me and it's one of the senior batch uh, students, diploma students. Uh, can I introduce Juliana? Juliana, please introduce yourself to our guests. Hello our everyone, my name is Juliana, I'm from Brazil. I'm a senior student here in ICTA and it's my pleasure to be here helping you, Chef Adam. Thank you, Juliana. So today's theme, we're going to talk about terrines and aspects to show you this, uh, some of the cold applications using U.S. chicken leg quarters. So what do we need to know about U.S. chicken? U.S. chicken is uh, produced in a crescent from Delaware all the way to Texas. It is grown by individual farmers and it's inspected by the USDA before it is exported. U.S.A. chicken is halal and it is most commonly used protein and very affordable. Nutritional value it's very high in protein because it is soy bean fed, very important. Low fat content, high in vitamins and minerals, uh, B6 and B12, vitamins A because it is corn fed. Vitamin E and antioxidants also rich in iron, zinc and copper. So let's talk about storing chicken. Chicken should be stored uh, uh, <clears throat> above zero degrees Celsius or below five degrees Celsius. If you receive your stock frozen, please keep it uh, below minus 18 degrees Celsius and put it in a freezer as soon as possible. Please avoid the danger zone between above five degrees or below 60 degrees Celsius. Store raw and, raw and cooked foods separately to prevent cross-contamination. Very important. So what is a terrine and an aspic? Terrine is a cooked Loaf of forced meat. An aspic is a savory jelly made with stock in which pieces of meat and vegetables are set. Very nice dishes to have on a hot, um, on a cold buffet or in the summertime. Now in Dubai, we're going into the winter right now, but it's still hot, so a very nice dish to make. And what makes this very nice? You can prepare it before the time and serve it. So let's start with preparing the meat. Now here I've got a beautiful U.S. chicken leg quarter. And of course the leg and the thigh, or the drumstick and the thigh. And together we call this the leg quarter, also known as the Maryland cut. Now to debone my chicken. Now very important, we're gonna use a deboning knife I'm going to remove the backbone. I'm going 
please, ladies and gentlemen, wear gloves when you work with chicken. Thank you very much. And we simply remove the backbone. Here's the joint that goes into the hip socket. Now, we've got our thigh, we've got our leg, and I'm going to work down the thigh bone, and that's why the deboning knife is so important. Nice thin blade, so you can work around the bones, because you want to get as much of the meat off the bone. And then I'm going to start with my drum seat. Right down on the bone, try to remove as much meat as possible. Around the joint. And simply put my knife underneath. Up. Cut around the joint. Try to remove as much of the meat as is possible. Then we're going to cut it off just before the knuckle. And there's our debone meat. Now, to make it more um, healthy option, we remove the skin. And especially with the terrine, we do not want the skin inside it. But this is an amazing piece of uh, protein. Simply spice it, roast it in the oven, cut it in pieces, deep fry it. Uh, makes a fantastic snack. So there's our Leg quarter debone. Now I'm going to cut this up into little squares to add to my terrine. Now, Juliana, what do you think? What do we do with the bones? Should we throw it away? No, I don't think we should throw away the bones. Sir. Never throw the bones away. We're going to use it for our stock. Now we can cut it through the joint bone to make it smaller. We can also cut it smaller. And the reason why we cut it smaller is to extract more flavor. The smaller you cut your bone, the more flavor you will be able to extract for our stock. And um, for my stock, I'm going to use the following. My stock pot, which is on. There we go. For my stock, I'm going to use celery, celery, leeks, onions, and carrots. And to that, I'm going to add a bouquet garni. You still remember your first day here when we did soups and you didn't even know what the bouquet garni is? So what is a bouquet garni? It's a bay leaf with peppercorns, uh, parsley stem, and we wrap it all together and we're going to use this to infuse flavor into our stock. So, into our stock pot, We're going to add our celery, our leeks, our onion, and our carrots. Now, traditionally when you want to make a white stock, you leave the, the carrots out. But because I'm cooking this for flavor and I will be adding uh, cream to my uh, terrine or to my aspic, I want more flavor in it. And then of course, my bones that has been washed. Uh, just watch that right one, please. And with that, I'm going to cover it with cold water. And I want to cover it to the top, all my bones, every thing should be submerged. And I'm going to bring that to the boil, turn it down to a simmer, let it cook for about two to four hours, and then you have a beautiful stock. Now, at home, what I do is I freeze my stock. After I cook my stock, I will let it cool down, put it in little ice cubes, and freeze it and use when necessary. Now, stocks give a fantastic flavor because it is a concentration of your flavors, and it gives an amazing flavor to any dish. Not only for, for terrine, but for any stew, uh, anything you do where you need a sauce, please use a stock.
And remember, we never ever season a stock. And the reason for that is because we want a balanced flavor. We want a neutral, balanced flavor that we can build our flavor profile on. Okay. So now, I've deboned my meat, and we go on to the next one. Uh, Mission asked. Mission asked. Can yes, you hear me? Yes, Chef. Um, like should, we, should we have a quick poll quickly? Yeah, we'll have a poll. And Chef, uh, a, a small request. You have a very powerful mic. Uh, so when you handle the utensils, uh, please be a little careful because it's very loud. I'll do that. My apologies. Okay, so the question that we put out is at what temperature must chicken be stored? And uh, most of the people have chose said that chicken must be stored between zero and four until used. But you do have a small percentage who say, say that it should be between five and 60 degrees Celsius. I think you need to clarify that. Okay. So the majority is correct. You should store chicken above zero degrees or below five degrees Celsius. Very important. Then some of you said above five degrees Celsius or below 60 degrees Celsius. That is wrong. That is the danger zone. In this temperature, uh, bacteria will multiply very fast and we try to keep our food out of the danger zone as far as possible. Does that answer the question? Yes, Chef. So right. you can continue. Thank you. So now we're going to make our terrine. So first of all, I grounded my meat. And this, of course, is my chicken leg quarter, US chicken that we've deboned and ground up. Now to that, I'm going to add my egg. And we'll just add a little bit of egg at the time. Some lemon juice. A pinch of white pepper. And some salt. Now be careful with the salt. You don't want to add too much. And then we're going to mix this up. Okay. And make sure you mix it very, very well. So this is called forced meat. So up next to make our curry. We've got our vegetables. And I have sliced some before the time. Now, for my terrine, I'm going to use carrots, zucchini, and then broccoli. Now, I'll slice this up very thinly with a mandolin already. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Juliana. So, just simply with a mandolin, and I slice it like this. If you do not have a mandolin, you can also use a peeler, but it will be quite difficult to get it the same thickness all over. So first we're gonna line our tip. Now traditionally we'll use a terrain malt, which is a long shape, half moon shape. But this works fantastic. I will do a molded one later on as well. And what we're going to do, we're going to lay out our pan with our vegetables. And that was, will give a beautiful color on the outside of our terrine. Put some yellow zucchini, some carrot, some green, 
And you can play around with this and use whichever vegetables you prefer. The carrots look really beautiful in this, and for that reason I've chosen carrots and zucchini. You can use eggplant, uh, so many different things. So we line up them with our vegetables. And what an amazing thing this is, you can make it before the time, keep it in the fridge, and when ready, just serve it up, bring it to temperature. Now to that, I'm going to add a layer of my forced meat. And I just want to put a little layer at the bottom. And from that, I'm going to start building. Now I'm going to press it down all the way. To hold everything together and then I'll start packing. And make sure you press it a little bit as you go so that it can be even. So look, John. Did you get it? So I press it down to the bottom to cover the whole bottom of my green tin. Now, I'm going to add some carrot syrups that I cut, and you'll see later on when I show the presentation what this will look like. After, you can play around with the designs, whatever you want. Um, really amazing. And then I'm going to add my broccoli to that. And I put it uh, with this inside down, the flower side down, and you'll see because I'm going to turn it to be upside down. So when I turn it upside down, this side will be on top. And lay the whole. Now, in between of that, I'm going to lay some of my force again and press it down as I go. Now, be gently, be careful. Not to disrupt your pattern you've got going on in the inside. What you can do before the time, if you're unsure about your seasoning, you can take a piece of your, your uh, meat and just cook it in a pan and taste for seasoning. If you need more, you can add. Juliana, then uh, you don't have to guess if you've got enough of it. Now I'm going to add some more carrot strips to that and just print it, press it gently into the meat. John, I'm going to show you in my shot now. Like that. And then I'm going to fill it up to the brim. Now be very gently with this. You don't want to disrupt your pattern of the vegetables inside. Because of, at the end of the day, that will affect your final presentation. So easy to make some. People should make it more often. And this was very, very... Uh, popular in France, a lot of great chefs have beautiful to read recipes. Right, now I've filled it up to the brim, now for my bottom I'm going to put my celery sticks. And I've cut this to size already, and I'm just going to simply press it down, and if there's any excess meat coming off, I will take that out. And you'll see now what this means. Press it down and simply remove the excess meat on top. Now, Juliana, we're going to bake this. First, I'm going to cut 
covered with some thin foil. And remember, you want the shiny side up. Cover it all the way. Make sure no water can get inside. Now, very important. In my oven tray, I have some water. So it's a water bath. And you want to fill it about just a little bit on to, uh, above the half of your tin. And we're going to bake this in the oven for 160 degrees for about 40 to 45 minutes. Afterwards, we'll take the temperature with a food thermometer and make sure it's above 71 degrees Celsius. Very important. Yeah? So, Juliana, will you go bake this in the oven for me quickly? Thank you. Take your water down. Bring it back. Now, because this is a live webinar and I don't have 45 minutes to cook this in, I don't have 45 minutes to cook this. We pretend it's cooked already and I'll show you the next step. Thank you very much. So this came back from the oven now, and now we need to press it down. Now, by pressing it down, we simply take another tin. And by pressing it down, means we can put a cutting board on top, we can put another fan on top. What I like to do is just use the same terrine tin, put it on top, and you can add weight to that. Now in a hotel, in a restaurant, we always use canned foods, especially the big uh, jars of tomato, ready peeled tomatoes work fantastic. It gives that beautiful pressure you need and it will press it down. So then we press it, we let it cool down, we put it in the fridge and let it cool down all the way and then we can slice it and present it. So now, on to the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> Just give me one tin again. Uh, one, one tin again. Thank you, Juliana. No, no, empty one. Thank you. And then now, after your, your terrine has set and it has cooled down, you leave it overnight in a fridge at above zero degrees, below five degrees Celsius to set all the way with the weight on top. And then we're just going to demold it by flipping it over. Now, Juliana, can you see why I put the broccoli upside down? Because now we have a beautiful orange tree. Now it looks like a tree and a little uh, carrot sticks we added. It looks like little oranges on top. And I'm serving this with a paprika cream sauce. And I just glazed it with a little bit of amazing dish. Very simple to make. Make it before the time, serve it on a hot day with salad as a starter, and it tastes amazing. Oh, that's beautiful, sure. it does, doesn't it? So colorful and very summery. Right, now, let's talk about cooking temperatures. For whole birds, we should cook it to 82 degrees Celsius and above. Remember that, if it's whole chicken. Parts with the bone in, 76 degrees Celsius or higher, and then, of course, boneless above 71 degrees Celsius. So, Mr. Nas, do you have any questions for me? Nas? Yes, Chef, yes, sorry, sorry. Uh, chef, I'd like you to, um, one of the questions I have is, can I mix chicken with other meats? Can I make a combination of chicken with other meat? Yes, of course you can. Uh, just make sure that it's all cooked to the right temperature. Um, but yes, you can mix uh, different meats. You can put anything in the terrine, what you want, the vegetables you prefer. Um, chicken works fantastic for this because of the flavor, flavor it brings to it. Um, so yes, does that answer the question? Yes, it does. And uh, many times people mix half and half of two different meats to make it interesting, or they put the meats in different layers. Okay, there's one other nice question actually about uh, can I make fusion flavors? I know this is French, but can I do some fusion flavors in it? Yes, of course. Um, 
This is one of those amazing dishes where fusion flavors actually works very well. Um, you can infuse, uh, infuse a lot of different things to get a taste that you prefer or that you like. And uh, chicken is a very, very good carrier of flavors. Um, so it works with a, a lot of different things. Uh, I just want to... Just give me that glass. I just want to show you something. Yeah. So for instance, when we make our, our career, we can put different layers in between as well. Yeah? Maybe a different kind of meat or a layer of uh, vegetables, then a layer of chicken, then a layer of meat. And you can use whatever vegetables you prefer. Anything that will, will, will stand the, the temperature in the oven. Does that answer the question? Thank you, Chef. Thank you. That was lovely. Thank you. Mm. You're welcome, Madam. Yes, we have another question from Rain Luka. She says, is there a vegetarian option to this? Is there a vegetarian Because we are... Hello? Yes, Chef. Because we are using... Because we are using chicken, uh, I prefer chicken. I'm a meat eater myself. But yes, of course, if you want to be a vegetarian, instead of using um, uh, chicken stock, you can use a vegetable stock. And then, of course, instead of using gelatin, you can use agar agar. So you can make a, a terrine, but without the gelatin and then without the, the, the chicken stock. Does that answer your question? And you can put beautiful vegetables inside and let it set in the fridge. Just remember to add agar agar. So you mean to say that the vegetable application is better in an aspic? That's what you're trying to say then? Yes, of course. <laughs> it will work for a terrine. We will prefer that it's meat inside, of course. Chicken terrine, very famous. Um, and then for a, for a, for a vegetarian op uh, option, Yes, definitely uh, aspect will work better. Yes, so are you going to show us the aspect now, Chef? Yes, so let's go on to our aspect. So, first of all, we made our chicken stock. It has cooked for four to, uh, two to four hours, and now we're going to make our aspect. Now, for this, I have salt. My deboned US chicken cubes, some lemon juice, some water, and then the most important gelatin. So, first of all, I'm going to soak my gelatin in the water. Very important. Now, I'm going to add my gelatin to a warm stock. Sorry, first, a pinch of salt into my stock, a little bit of lemon juice, and then I'm going to cook my chicken inside my stock. I'm going to leave it to cool down a little bit, and then I will add my gelatin. Now, I've done this already. Thank you. This is just to save some time. Yeah. So I've got my post chicken inside my stock, and this is still a little bit warm. It cooled down quite nicely, and I'm going to add my gelatin to that. Just let the gelatin soak a little bit more. And instead of putting it in a pan, this time we're going to. Set it in a mold. And I've got this beautiful spear shapes or half moon molds here. So my jelly thing has set, uh, dissolved. I'm going to squeeze out the excess water. I'm going to put it in my stock and then stir it in. And this is very important so the gelatin will be in the stock and this will help to set it. We'll use about five, five grams to 200 moles. Um, you can experiment with it, how strong or how weak your, your, 
gelatinous. What is important? It should set. See this after a little bit more. The last one, so it will not dissolve. Low heat. Okay. Now, our gelatine is. Um, Dissolve and now I will continue. Okay. So I let the stock cool down a little bit and then I'm going to add my capers and some top charts. Now to this, I will add some cream. And for this reason, is why I added carrots to my stock. I'm mix that up very good. I'm going to add a little bit of capers inside my mold. I'm going to add a little bit of capers inside my mold at the bottom. And a little bit of my chop chops. And I'm simply going to pour this into my mold all the way to the top. And please make sure that you add some chicken pieces to that. That's my pieces here. Just make sure that. All your molds do have some chicken inside. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this in the chiller overnight for my gelatin to set. What I like to do is put it in a freezer to freeze it a little bit. And then before I serve it, I will defrost it at one to five degrees Celsius. Okay. Now my aspect has set overnight. And because I froze it a little bit before the time, it's easier, easier to handle and I will demold this. Just demold this, slide it onto my plate and serve it. Here's my aspect, oh, my aspect done. So, just let's look at the plate I made before the time. And here's some aspect I made before the time. Now, what I've done here for the base is simply I take a, a biscuit, I mix it crumbed it up, mixed it with a little bit of melted butter, set it on a, a tray and cut it out with a, thank you, cut it out with a biscuit cutter, um, a little bit bigger than what my mold is actually at and serve it up. And with that, I serve it with some uh, micro herbs and with a with a little bit of herb oil, just to bring out the color. And look at that, Juliana. Doesn't it look lovely? Yeah. Now, you will serve this at one to five degrees Celsius. Take it out of the freezer before the time to give it time to get soft and serve it as quick as it is ready. Something you can make before the time, make service of dinner so or for lunch so much easier, especially in the hot weather we have, serve it with a salad, amazing start at the beginning of your dish. Uh, Mission asked to have a, a poll to go.
No? Yes, yes, Chef. Just putting it on. Sorry, I was okay. Done. So this is a nutrition-based question. Why is chicken a preferred meat for health reasons? Everyone seems to have got it correct. Low cholesterol and a high protein content. Yes, and uh, a very good meat for a diet. And the way it was shown today, just poached and baked in the oven, very healthy, a very healthy, very, very healthy option. Yes, that's correct. Thank you, Shinoz. Uh, it is low in cholesterol and high in protein. A very healthy option, especially when you remove the skin. Uh, just shows you what a versatile uh, product chicken really is. Uh, Shanaz, is there any questions for me? This time, Chef, I managed to answer a few questions that had come up uh, about whether to use gelatin leaf or powder. I've done that for you. So that's it, Chef. Is that it? Yes. So, thank you very much for joining me again. Uh, next week, same place, different time. Next week, it will be at 3 o'clock. And I want to thank uh, Juliana for assisting me today. Thank you, Give him a big smile. Thank you so there much. There you go. Thank you. Um, please join us ne next, next week. And I really hope you learned something. Please go try these recipes at home. We are sharing the recipes with you online. Thank you very much. See you next week. Uh, Shanaz, over to you. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much for the lovely demos you did for us. And thank you, everyone, for coming and watching our uh, webinar, for being with us, for supporting us. Do hope you make, try to make a terrine at home and uh, do, do, do post the pictures for us because it's very exciting when people post pictures after our webinar session. And look forward to seeing you again with us very soon. That is next week with Chef Adam again. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you, Shanice and Chef Adam for this wonderful session. This particular aspect and terrain looks fantastic. Uh, for those who have joined us a little late, an email will soon follow with a replay video of this webinar together with the handout as well. Also, we encourage you to recreate this terrain and aspect and share them on your social media platforms by tagging at IC Dubai and at US Poultry. We look forward to seeing you for another exciting session very soon on ICCA Live. Until then, goodbye from all of us here.